to the show!
because that's the first film at the end producer. I guess he did it back while doing what he told me, but you know, it was as much pressure for me as it was for him. You know. Was Stevie in the studio much during those sessions? Because I've heard lots of rumors that he didn't play bass on a lot of the tracks, and maybe not all the scenes of Lost supposedly play bass on a few tracks. At the end of the session before he did the movie, um, I played bass on a few songs. But before that, Gene would be at um, Hit Factory in New York, and Paul would be at um, Right Track. And they'd get on the phone to each other and go, can I use Mark, can I use Mark? So I'd be back and forth in the taxi cab all for two weeks, from one studio to the other. Yeah. Did Gene go blocked from your understanding play on anything on the record? He's the bass player in the Plasmatic, supposedly played some bass on the record. Does that ring a bell to you? The color guy with the blonde streak in his hair? Yeah. Um, I don't know if he played it. I think he wrote a song with me, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but you don't know if he played it. No, no. Um, Mitch Weissman played a little guitar bass, I think. On the record? The guy looks like Paul McCartney, yeah. yeah. Paul. Why were Gene and Paul working in separate studios? Well, I'm sure everybody knows why. Tell us, for the people that don't. Like, I, don't, I really don't know. I mean, it's like, besides that, I mean, we, they sleep on different floors, ride in different cars, eat at different times, and so forth, so forth. So so different, different modes of work. You, you don't have people on that. Okay. What do you remember? Are there certain tracks that stand out for you that you played on that you're particularly proud of or have some interesting stories about? Hmm. Not really. What am I really about? Um, It's all about the same thing. I remember spending a lot of money at the lunch and Paul would get mad uh, for a $2,000 lunch bill. But that's all I remember. What were you eating for two cents? The whole left side of the menu? Yeah, it was for the crew, too. <laughs> if you could talk about each member of the band, though, your impressions of them, both musically and, and as people, let's start with Eric Clark. God bless his soul. Um, I thought he was a great drummer. Um, nice guy. We hung out together a lot um, because he was a second member himself. And he kind of like showed me the ropes um, and helped me and Paul for all that. And um, he was a really nice guy. I got along with him a lot. He seemed frustrated a lot doing what he was, he was being held back a lot. But, um, As a drummer? Yeah, I, I guess he was in the band maybe six or seven years before I joined him. And, you know, he, he wanted more, he wanted to sing live, he wanted, you know, and he's always pushing for that, you know. Yeah. How about your, your, your impressions of Gene as a Gene in a person? Gene the mogul. Um, Gene is a hard person to characterize. He has so many different levels of intelligence. Um, music is just a small part of what he does. You know, just a small part. Um, it's like an iceberg, you know, the tip of the iceberg is underneath with the big part, you know. And Paul, I think Paul runs the show as far as um, the decision making and how things come out. When we did the album, um, everything has to look for him for verification and stuff. So, he has a lot of responsibility, a lot of responsibility. Who do you think you were close to while we were living in? I was close to all of them, you know. But I'm a kid from like Hollywood and they're all from New York, so it was hard for me to adjust to a lot of styles. You know. just, just a way of life, I guess, for shape. So. What do you remember about the, the, the photo shoot for the back cover? Where was that shot? Your memories of that? Of oh, the back photo? Yeah. Um, I think it was a rock tour in New Jersey somewhere. I don't remember. It was about three in the morning. And uh, it was freezing outside. I, I couldn't tell you where it was. Can I name a couple tracks if you have any, any memory? Sure. Sure. About Heaven's on Fire, obviously, a huge hit. Uh, Heaven's on Fire. That was a good song. Um, I remember us doing the vocal tracking on that. We didn't have a. All four of us in the studio singing one line, 
and then double in again, and double in. So we have like three or four voices going. And that was very interesting. I learned a lot about recording with the guys. How about Thrills in the Night? That was a John Lamar song, I think. Yeah, that was great song, so I like that. Yeah. What were, some, were there any songs on the record that you don't like? And why? Um,
Rock and Roll All Night brings you interviews, reviews, concerts, music, and more. So for more Rock and Roll All Night content, click subscribe.